Hey everyone, let's go ahead and do another guide video on our continuous random variables. And this time we're going to introduce the ideas of our central limit theorem. So remember, we're like one of the big differences here is now instead of talking about the distributions of a single measurement, we want to talk about the distribution of a sample or of more than just one. Okay, so here we go. So it says, hey, remember Harry from last time while well, he was working with Jack? And another trainer came up to him and revealed the secrets of the central limit theorem. Harry was so impressed that he decided he wanted to crunch some numbers. During these uh, games, they have a row off to see how far athletes can row in four minutes. Uh, at this competition, they have an event called Battle of the North Sea, where athletes are randomly assigned to teams and compete in Viking-inspired rowing events. Overall, we know that the average four-minute rowing distance is about 800 meters, with a variance of... 184,400 meters squared, and they know the distances are not normally distributed. Okay, so that means they might be, you know, some people are really, really good, but the vast majority are, you know, have much slower um, rowing speeds and therefore cover less distance in that four minutes. Okay, but let's go ahead and just say that mu equals 800. We know that one, and we know that sigma squared is equal to 1,800 or 184,000. 900 meters squared and so that sigma is going to be equal to the square root of sig2 and so we can see that sig is just going to equal 430 meters okay so lots of variance lots of um, variability in this data but we've got our mean and we've got a standard deviation Okay, now we know that the central limit theorem, we can use it in two ways, uh, where we can use it if the original distribution is normally distributed, which it explicitly told us that it wasn't, or if the sample size is big enough. And remember that cutoff that we're using for our class is greater than or equal to 30. And so it says for the first event, they group into teams of 83 called ramming speed. And what percent of teams can average above 835 meters. Okay, so this is this is a great question. Uh, what we need to also figure out is what is going to be our sigma x bar or the standard deviation with respect to talking about the sampling mean. Okay, so sigma x bar is going to be equal to um, we take our sigma and we're going to divide it by the square root of n, or the sampling size, which is 83. And so we've got our, let's see what that is, sigma x bar, and that equals 47-ish. Okay, great. So now we want to know if we, when we get into these teams, what percent of teams can average above 835? Great, let's go to our statistics, and we go to our continuous, normal, and we can go to normal probabilities. Let's get rid of this data. Okay, so we know that the mean is 800, but now it asks for the standard deviation, and we have two in here now. We have this 430, and we have this 47. This 430 was about the was the standard deviation for the distribution of the individual measurements, whereas this 47 is the standard deviation of our sampling mean. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that guy and paste it in right there. Oops, give me a second. There we go, pasted it in. There's my standard deviation. And now I've got my variable values. And here I want to know if I can get above what percent of groups can average above 835 when there are in fact 83 people on each of these teams, okay? And we want the upper tail because we want above 835 because it says what can average above 835 meters. And we'll click OK. And from this guy, we see that there are about, you know, there's about a 23% chance that, you know, a randomly selected group or team of 83 um, would in fact be able to do this. Okay. Next one, how many standard deviations away from the mean is the target distance uh, for ramming speed? Okay, so the target distance would be that, uh, that 835. 
And so how we figure out that number of standard deviations, remember it's just the z, well, let's get down here, z equals, it's going to be x bar minus mu, and we're going to take that whole thing, and we are going to divide by sigma x bar. That's how we figure out how many standard deviations away that 835 is going to get us. So let's give it a shot. So instead of doing this, uh, I can go through and just kind of type these out. We'll do 835 minus mu. Now I could type in the 800 or I can just type in the letters mu because I've already said, said that it is that. If you want to use this little trick, remember beforehand somewhere you have to type that mu equals 800 or whatever your mean is. And I'm going to divide by sigma x bar. And when I hit enter, remember it just kind of goes off to the side. But my z value is equal to 0.74 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, for the second event, uh, they group teams into teams of 39 called rating party. And what percent of teams can average above 835? Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to basically get ourselves a new X bar. Because instead of 83 people, there's going to be uh, 39. We still have this same target of 835 meters. But let's go ahead and click enter on this guy. And it says what percent of teams can average above that 835? Well, let's look at now what sigma uh, x bar is. And now we notice that it's bigger. Before it was 47, now it's 68. And the reason that, that, is, that it is that way is because of the sample size. As your sample size increases, the sampling standard deviation will decrease. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that. And let's go to our basic statistics. We can go to our normal distribution. Let's go to our probabilities again. And we can actually leave everything the same here because it's the exact same question, except the standard deviation is updated to this 68 instead of that previous 47. Okay, and I can go ahead and click OK. And this one is going to be 37% of teams. And you're like, wait a second, we just calculated that the percent of teams above 835 was 22 and now you're telling me it's 30 and the answer is yes because when our sample sizes are different if your sample size is smaller it's easier to get further and further away from the true mean if your sample sizes are large it's very hard to get uh, very far away from what the true mean is so here we could once again ask how many standard deviations away from the mean is our target distance and we can just, oh dear, we can rerun our z equation, right? z, mu, and we retold what x bar was. It's this 68. And so we, when we hit enter now and we type out z, we see now that it's like 50% uh, is in fact, or sorry, it, we're, 0 0.5, 0 0.508 standard deviations above the mean instead of 0.75 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, so Jack, uh, remember he was the promising athlete from last time, wants to know what his team's average should be if they want to get into the top 5%, both the ramming speed and the rating party events. Okay, so ramming speed was this first one, and we want to get into the top 5%. How, what's our kind of target speed? Well, let's go to those quantiles because we're given our percentage and we need to figure out a critical value. So we can go to normal quantiles and we're looking for 0.05 or 5%. We know that the mean is going to be 800. And our standard deviation. Well, let's start off with ramming speed. And ramming speed's standard deviation was this 47. And let's go ahead and paste it in there. And we want to be in the top 5%, so we want to get into that upper tail. And we can go ahead and click OK. And here we see that we need to get something like 
877 meters for that first group if we want to be in the top 5%. And if we want to get into the top 5% for the smaller group where we we're like only had 39 people in our team, remember that had a different standard deviation. And we can click OK. And we see that it's 931. OK, so why is one of these bigger than the other? Well, the ramming speed is smaller because we've got to get 83 people um, to average in the top 5%. And down here, we only have to get 39 people to average in the top 5%. The 39 people, it's easier to get further away from the mean than it was with the ramming speed. OK, and then we can say, why is the ramming? Speed distance from the mean top 5% less for the ramming speed than the rating party. And it says consider these following graphics. Okay, so we noticed 877 kind of right here and 913 right here. And the reason is, is because as our sample size gets bigger, it gets narrower. If our sample size is smaller, it's wider or further away from where that true mean is. And so then we can go here and look at this. So like fewer rowers in ramming. Well, I've got to go see which one had fewer rowers. Okay, so ramming speed had the more rowers. So let's go look at that. More rowers in ramming speed means that the standard error is larger, which makes the distance at the top 5% from the mean closer to that of the rating party, or more rowers in ramming speed means that the standard error is smaller. And the standard error is another way that we can call this sigma x bar. It's just another way to call that. So the standard error for ramming speed was smaller, 47 as compared to 68, than that of the rating party. So the distance to the top 5% from the mean is closer than that of the rating party. Okay, so now that we've got those all put in, we can go ahead and check to make sure that we got our answers. Okay, and in fact we were. It looks like that we were able to calculate out all those answers correctly. So I hope that that helps you out in are your kind of first steps in using the central limit theorem.